Hi, friends. This week, I'm not holding back. We're doing a What Would Leo Do? I haven't done one in a while, but you guys have asked me to bring it back. And for anyone that's new, hi. What Would Leo Do? is where people write in and send me their situation and ask for advice. Basically, what Leo would do, but I end up just giving advice most of the time. But this week, I'm going to be kind of mean because people need it. <laughs> All right, I got my little laptop. Let's jump into this. First situation. T. Someone said, okay, so there's this white boy TikToker who goes to my university and he preaches like he's progressive and shit. Sometimes feminist, yada yada, and he gets a lot of praise. But in real life, I've met him and he's such an asshole and does not actually have those values. And it irritates me that he gets clout or attention from women online who hype him up, but he is genuinely not like that whatsoever in real life. My friends say I should like publicly call him out or something like that, but it's a little bit cringy. Anyways, what should I do? Welcome to it, babe. TikTok is the biggest bunch of bullshit you'll ever see in your life. I've met all of these influencers y'all follow. There's people y'all don't even know that I've met that I've met. None of them match what they preach. None of these celebrities, none of these influencers. This is something you just got to get used to. Let the little boy have his moment and just understand and get through your head. What people preach online is not accurate with what they believe or think in real life. This is a game. Social media is a full game. And all the influencers you see and all these celebrities, this is a business. And you guys have watched my whole journey with all of this and you've seen me try to cling to my soul and hold it and keep it. And I have. It's been a rocky ass road, but this is all a business. These people you see are businesses. They're not people. Don't look at people on social media like influencers as like humans and don't take what they say at face value. All the private conversations you and all your friends have, we all have them too. Nobody actually is posting, besides me, what they really think. Let me not say no one because there are some people who talk about what they think and feel, but it's not fully. I don't even fully say everything I think and feel because of cancel culture. So you have to understand the kind of like bind that people on social media are in. You can't say certain things because one thing you say people don't like, your whole life can be ruined over it. They just tried to cancel me like a month ago over a bunch of horse shit. But people are gonna post what gets them accepted and loved and get followers and all that. That's typical. It's normal. It's That's the norm. For you to see the discrepancy, babe, let me wake you up to the real life of all this. It's all horse shit. It's all lies. Like These people are not truthful and honest with what they really think and feel. But you have to also take into consideration the level of harshness with saying anything people don't like. You can say one thing someone doesn't like and your whole family will be getting death threats. You'll get swatted. Cops will be showing up at your place. It's happened to me multiple times. Why do you think I keep leaving the city? Why do you think you can't find me no more? I'm always running. I'm always moving because people are so dumb, genuinely just dumb. And I don't want to talk about cancel culture. I'll do a whole episode on that. But with this boy, just let him have his little fame. Let him have his little moment. These people, you can't stop them all. But also with retaliating and exposing someone, you have to look at what that makes you look like. Because if I were to get online and expose all of the shit that I know about all these people, it makes me look bad. I look like shit talker. I look like just like a bitter loser who... Is just like talking about a lot of people. Even when people were making up lies about me and withholding context and trying to cancel me, I have dirt on all of them. But you have to look at how does it make you look to defend yourself? Are you defending yourself or are you just trying to deplatform someone and expose someone? Because there are people who are going to look at you just like a liar. You do look like a clout chaser when you talk about other people because all the people who talked about me, that's how I was looking at them. Like you clout chasing little opportunistic rat. That's exactly how I was looking at all these people. But my point is it doesn't benefit you to expose him at all. Yeah, he's a fake. Yeah, he's a fraud. So's everybody else. You just got to play the game and you just got to let him have his little moment. Who gives a shit? But the biggest thing when I say let them have their little moment, these people who promote crap and are not honest and are fake, it always gets exposed. So you're seeing someone being built up off of lies and bullshit and getting praised for it. God is building them up. The universe is building them up because they're taking them to a high point to drop them from to wake them up. So let them have their little rise. 
they will plummet and everything will come crashing down. Not that you should be like happy about that. It's fine if you are, that's normal to watch people get their fucking karma. Like it's like, okay, cool. It is a little satisfying sometimes, but look at the people who are canceling me. That's my point is you don't wanna be associated and responsible for someone's downfall because you do not ever get a platform by deplatforming others and exposing others. And if you do have a platform where you're just exposing people, you're just a little shit talker for a living. All the people who were talking about me for a little five minutes of fame and some money and some clout, yeah, they got it, but they have no integrity and no one respects them and no one gives a shit about them at the end of the day. You're gonna attract people who feed off of negativity and bullshit. That's what these people with these platforms have. You don't wanna have that. You don't wanna be someone who's just wrecking other people and ripping people down. So my advice is just let him have his little moment. Don't associate, whatever. Don't be responsible for their downfall because it's not gonna be as good of a downfall if you just let God take care of it. The universe and God, I use those interchangeably. God protects people's secrets for a reason. He's planning for when things will be revealed and when things will be brought into the light. Do not tamper with that. Trust that good always wins. Trust and keep leading with your heart. You don't need to do it. The secrets are being hidden for a reason because like I said, when they come out, it's gonna have a way grander impact and a way bigger like hit and like decapitation than you can cause. So I know you wanna fight for the truth and fight for what's right. None of this social media shit is the truth and none of it is right. Just to let you know, that's the norm. You're gonna be the crazy one. And also it's gonna repel people from you because no one's gonna feel safe with you because you're running to social media to expose people. If that's what you do, you're not safe. No one's ever gonna to wanna to be around you or share a bag with you or do nothing fun because you're a rat. That's what it looks like. So don't do that. Let him have his little moment. Let God hold his fucking secrets in the dark until he's ready to shine light on them and make people pay for what they're doing. So that's my advice to you. That's what Leo would do. And that's what Leo does and is doing. People are still running their mouth. And you know what I'm not doing? talking about them or addressing them because what that does is signal you're on the same level. You don't want to do that. And you also don't want to make more controversy because he will get bigger from it. So let him have his moment. Stay quiet. God will handle it. All right. The next person said, how would you handle having to see your ex you're in no contact with at the gym that you both go to six days a week? Are we fucking for real with that one? <laughs> go at a different time or go to a different gym. Why are you doing that to yourself? Because it doesn't feel good going to the gym. It does, actually. You're gonna have to get used to not going to the gym with that fire under you of like, I'm gonna make sure I look good. You have a big sense of motivation right now of trying to piss this motherfucker off and make him regret his life. So when I say switch to a new gym, it sounds like eh, but there's an emotional attachment because you have this motivation to go every day. You have this motivation to get dressed and be hot and be on your shit and be eating right because you got somebody to like kick dirt at in a way like subconsciously. So there is gonna be a sense of detachment and a sense of like, Ugh, I don't wanna switch gyms because you like that. It's totally fine to like it, that's normal. Like when you know your ex is gonna be somewhere, you're gonna show up to show out and you have that every single day. So you got a big boost with going toward your goals. So it's not gonna feel good to switch gyms or go at a time where you intentionally don't run into him. But if you really wanna get into some dark psychology and a power play, He's seeing you every single day at the same time. He's associating that with you guys trying to time it at the same time. If he's trying to time it because he secretly wants to see you and you stop going at that time, you just big dicked him. You just took the upper hand. He's gonna be over here like, oh, what, she didn't come? Don't go. If you wanna play like the manipulative game, play it right. <laughs> Or be really consistent. One thing I do, I have six gym memberships that I pay for every month. I go to different gyms all the time. You can't catch me. You can't ever pin me down in one spot. That's my own thing. But that's one thing you can do is sprinkle your presence in here and there. Keep him on his toes. Keep him wasting his good outfits on the days that you happen to just not show up. Like play the game right or don't play it. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, the next person asks, do you believe once a cheater, always a cheater? My opinion on this is once a cheater on you they will always be a cheater on you 
People can learn and change and grow and not cheat. I've cheated before. I will never do it again because I've learned my lesson and I've grown from it. But if someone cheats on you, in your mind, they're always a cheater. So once a cheater on you, they're always a cheater. And that comes from a place of once you experience a betrayal and a rupture like that and a rupture in the trust with someone, there's no repairing it. It's like shattering a vase that's glass and trying to glue the pieces back together. It's always going to look fucked up. It's always going to be leaking. It's always going to be wrong, off, not in its original form. Cheating is one thing you cannot recover from, in my opinion and from my experience. So in the back of your head, even five years down the line, you're going to have rebuilt everything. You're going to have forgiven and forgotten and moved on. And they're going to be a little late getting home one night. Or they're going to want to go out. And you're immediately in the back of your head going to be like, this motherfucker cheated on me. Why are you not home when you said you were? Checking their location. It's going to drive you nuts. So my opinion is once a cheater, always a cheater with you. Yes. But in general, objectively with people, once a cheater, always a cheater. Not always. It's just situational with the relationship that you're in. If they've cheated on you, they're always a cheater in your head. In the back of your head, in the back of your head, they're always going to be a cheater. You're always going to be like, what the fuck are you up to? You're going to be going through their following, going through the photos they like. You're going to be a lunatic. I get it. I know. Because we are one. Okay, next person said, I'm talking to this guy, and whenever I try talking to him consistently, he pulls away, which I obviously don't like. So when I take a step back, he just bombards me with messages. It's like I'm stuck in a cycle. What does this mean, and what do I do? The person you're dealing with has a weird association with love. This is a really, like deep thing mentally and emotionally. So for consistency to be off-putting to someone... That means their association with love is that feeling of intermittent reinforcement or communication and things not being consistent. There's a sense of stability that comes from consistency. If you are not used to that in a relationship setting or if you don't like consistency and it's off-putting, it's because you're attached to that dopamine hit of the curiosity, the questioning, the unknown, the spontaneous shit you get from people when you're in a relationship or you're talking to somebody. Are they going to text me? Are they not? When you anticipate all day and you're nervous and you got butterflies and you're like, got to shit a little. And then they finally text you and you get that hit of dopamine. It makes you feel like you're attached to that person. That's how they're operating with you. They're not someone that wants consistency and stability. They're someone who likes that rush, the chase, the back and forth, the dopamine hit, the inconsistency because of how it feels emotionally, mentally, and physically because you do flush your body with dopamine when you're in an intermittent reinforcement pattern or that is your relationship to being in relationships. If it's an intermittent reinforcement pattern, they're going to like that and they're not going to like that you're consistent. The day they're inconsistent and you match it, Oh, you're going to have him like a bug up your ass obsessed with you. As soon as you can trigger that little like emotional fight or flight of like, do I have or do I not? The chase, as soon as you can trigger that, they're going to be attached to you. They're going to be addicted to you. But if you Google intermittent reinforcement patterns in relationships, someone will actually get addicted to you and they're not going to let you go. So be very, very careful. So Leo, from my previous experience and my understanding of all the shit with this person, I'm going to go away. I'm going to go ahead and scoot the boot and get the fuck out of there and not deal with that person because I don't got time for that. Let's go get our dopamine from making money. Let's go do something fun. Let's be consistent with our relationship and get the emotional highs and lows out of life. You know what I mean? I'm not the type to do with the unstable relationship shit. It's not for me. So Leo would leave. But now that I gave you a little bit better of an understanding, you kind of know what to do. You can go forward with it, but understand what's going on from their side and don't question your value. And if you're not good enough, it's about the emotional shit going on with him. Trust. Okay, next person said, I asked my food. This is so me. <laughs> this is so me. Sensitive bitch. I asked my friends to go out with me and they bailed, but hung out two nights later together and didn't ask me. Do I have a right to feel mad or is that childish? You have a right to feel however you feel. You do not have a right to lash out and be an asshole and retaliate because of a perceived mistreatment from them. I'm just going to give you a couple of perspectives, not to make an excuse, but just other things to consider in your mind. Maybe they 
are going through something and they wanted to talk about it. Maybe they were going to hang out with someone or meet up with someone who you don't like or they don't like you or they just didn't feel like you'd mesh with the group or they went somewhere and did something you don't like to do or they just didn't want you there. That's a possibility too. But I can guarantee you if you go at them angry and pissed off of like, what the fuck? And you get mad at them. They're not going to respond well to that. They're not going to empathize with you. They're not going to care. They're just going to look at you like a sensitive and irrational person of like, oh, God forbid I don't invite Sally Mae. She's going to have an aneurysm and start her period over it. Like if there's always a negative consequence and always complaints and criticisms toward people because they do things, they're never going to learn. That's not how you get someone to want to invite you to things. You have to go to them and ask, hey, what's tea? I would literally just FaceTime them, like group FaceTime, be like, y'all don't fuck with me no more. Like make it a joke and be like, everybody wants to go on a date and leave me be. Like you can joke about it. They'll know you're serious. You can play it that route or you could just straight up ask them like, is this something happen? Cause I'm over here feeling very left out. <laughs> like be cute, be funny, be like sweet about it. Don't be an asshole, but don't try to be too understanding where you make room for excuses. If they just don't want to hang out with you, but don't want to say it, pick up the hints, babe. If they don't want to hang out with you, they don't want to hang out with you. If you're not fun for them, then you're not fun for them. It doesn't mean you're not fun. It means go hang out with other people, but I'm sure you can just have a little conversation about this and clear it up real quick. Do it fun, do it easy, don't go at them mad, and don't go at them like freaking out. But the route that I suggest is texting them, then like in a group chat or something, just be like, hey, miss you, what are y'all doing? Like initiate hanging out, say you miss them and see what's going on, read the energy. You gotta be a little vulnerable, you could say, hey, miss you. Just read it from there. But if this is a track record, get some new friends. It's okay, it's not you, maybe it is. But if you're not for them, it just means you're for someone else. So go find him. All right. The next person said, I've been journaling, trying to go to the gym, going to university, getting better with my skincare and to socialize. And I'm trying to do everything to better myself, but I still feel alone, drained and depressed. Yeah, it's because what people promote online is not real. To journal and go to the gym is not a fulfilling life. That's fucking boring. And you've experienced that. You're not doing anything wrong. You're learning. So you've learned things to implement to try and better your life and you feel worse. But I don't want you to get discouraged that you've done all these things and it didn't work. It's okay. It's just not meant for you. What works for other people doesn't always work for you. If you found me and you like the shit that I talk about, we're always the exception. What works for them don't ever work for us. There's people who are happy as could be, wake up in the morning, drink their little smoothie, their lemon water, go to the gym, make a TikTok about their lemon water, and they're fulfilled. Not us. <laughs> but like I said, don't get discouraged. You've just learned a lot of things that don't really work or didn't achieve what you wanted. So figure out what it is that you want and what it is you want to feel and look at the actions you're taking and the things that you're doing and see, does that line up? Is there a better way to achieve what I'm trying to achieve? Do I really have to do this shit or am I just blindly following some loser on TikTok with abs? I'm proud of you though. I just want to say that because you've kind of mastered the skill of discipline now. You're doing your shit, taking care of yourself. It's just time to reevaluate. Don't get discouraged and be like, oh, it's not working. It isn't working what you're doing because you need to cater it to you and figure out what works for you for what you want and then do that. So don't get discouraged. Don't get mad. Don't get upset. Not everything is going to work for you how other people claim for it to work for them. Side note, like I said in the beginning, these influencers are fake as shit. All these people that are like healthy and all that going to the gym, drinking their lemon water, got so many drugs in their system, they can barely even function on the weekends and most nights. So these things that people claim work for them and fulfill them don't. So because you're experiencing that they don't fulfill you or make you feel better, they make you feel worse. It's not unrealistic. It's just not for you. That little lifestyle everybody promotes is one bullshit, but two, not for you. So you've learned now Make the little changes and cater it to you. You got this. You fully got this. It's going to get better. You just got to learn your little way. And this is all progress. It's not a setback. But setbacks only exist if there's been progress. So remember that. 
Oh my God. Okay, next person said, I told my boyfriend over a month ago that my love language is words of affirmation and I told him I need him to vocalize his affection for me because that's how I feel most loved. And he told me he doesn't feel like he should have to tell me every day how he feels about me because we're in a relationship and that should be enough reassurance in itself. He doesn't feel like he should have to tell me every day how he feels about me. He also doesn't feel like he's responsible for meeting emotional needs for you and loving you the way you want to be loved. That's what he's saying. He's straight up to your face telling you, I don't give a fuck about what I can do to make you feel better or make you feel reassured or feel happy in this relationship. He's basically saying, you deal with that. My presence should just be enough for you. Does he think he's fucking God? A lot of people act like that. A lot of people do that and I hate it. One person has said that to me. And that was the last thing they ever said to me. We haven't spoke since. Okay, wait, there's more. I didn't read it. I also asked him if he could post me every once in a while. And he said he's private on social media and doesn't even post himself much on there. What's your advice? He don't like you. I don't want to sound so harsh and so rude about it, but you're telling him things you want and that would make you feel good. And he's giving you every excuse why he doesn't feel like he needs to do it. He's doing nothing but justifying not meeting your needs. That's it. Cut and dry. Like, I hate to be rough. I hate to be harsh. I know that's going to hurt, but... It's what you need to kind of like jar you out of it, of like what's really going on. It's very clear with what you said and what he's saying that he either doesn't give a shit, he doesn't know how to care about someone like you, and that's totally fine. And that doesn't mean you're hard to love. You're just asking the wrong fucking person who's incapable. Keep that in the back of your head. But the third thing I want to point out, what a pussy bitch. You can't do anything to make someone feel better. You're just going to do nothing but make excuses. An excuse-making bitch is who this dude is. So do with that what you will. I'm sorry I was rough with you. I love you. I care about you. I'm only telling you this because I've been in the same situations too where you're like love-blinded, rose-colored glasses, and you make excuses for people's behavior. See that the excuses being made here are more from him about why he can't and shouldn't love you and why he's validated in that. That's a truth that hurts, but it'll set you free. Okay, another person asked basically the same thing. I constantly ask my partner for reassurance over the same topics over and over, but they get annoyed with me and don't want to reassure me with the same topics anymore. How do I stop myself from asking? You're not asking me, how do I stop myself from asking? You're asking, how can I be okay with being neglected? You're never going to not have that need. You're never going to not want reassurance. Your option is to get good at not having it cope with it and deal with it for the means of staying in that relationship or find somebody who knows how to love you and has no fucking qualms about it and doesn't act like it's hard to love you. You're not asking for too much. You're asking the wrong person. Run that back if you need it. <laughs> love you. Okay, quick pause. Yeah, peep the new merch. It's coming soon. <laughs> Big thank you to the sponsors of today's podcast. The first one is Prolon. And if you have any interest in fasting, listen up. Prolon is a revolutionary plant-based nutrition program that nourishes the body while making cells believe they're fasting. Prolon has been researched and developed for decades, and it helps promote healthy blood sugar, support cardiovascular health, and reduce abdominal fat. But Prolon isn't a diet. Prolon is a science. Science based on Nobel Prize winning discoveries in medicine. And this all starts with Prolon's five-day program. Snacks, soups, and beverages all designed to keep your body in a fasting state. So with Prolon, you can eat and fast because your body still thinks it's fasting. Cheat code. And right now, Prolon is offering aware and aggravated listeners 10% off their five-day nutrition program. If you're interested, you can go to prolonlife.com slash aware. That's P-R-O-L-O-N life.com slash aware for this special offer. That's prolonlife.com slash aware. Now, our next sponsor is StoryWorth, and this is one of the cutest gift ideas. If you have anyone you care about, especially a parent, this will help you out. So each week, StoryWorth emails your loved one a thought-provoking question that you get to help pick. StoryWorth makes the writing process a breeze. All your loved one has to do is respond to that email with a story. Long or short, it doesn't matter. You'll be emailed a copy of your loved one's response as they're submitted over the course of the year. You'll get to enjoy the retelling of the stories you already know or be surprised by stories you've never heard before. After that year, StoryWorth compiles your loved one's stories and photos into a beautiful keepsake hardcover book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. You can even get a copy of the book for yourself. 
And families love StoryWorth. That's why it has over 25,000 five-star ratings on Trustpilot with millions of stories preserved since they were founded over 10 years ago. And this is perfect time for Father's Day. So you can give all the fathers in your life a unique heartfelt gift you'll cherish for years. Right now, save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash aware. That's storyworth.com slash aware to save $10 on your first purchase. Highly recommend, they're cute, and it's very bonding. I love this, I love StoryWorth. Now our last sponsor is Green Chef, and I've talked about them before. And that's because Green Chef is the number one meal kit for clean eating, delivering pre-portioned and prepped quality whole foods with limited processed ingredients. Green Chef sends organic, fresh produce, responsibly sourced proteins, and chef-designed recipes in every box for satisfying, nourishing, and convenient meals that will make it easy to stick to a clean routine. And they have recipes for all kinds of lifestyles. So they have Mediterranean, plant-based, gluten-free, protein-packed, keto, calorie-smart, and gut health. You got all kinds of options. Each week, you get to choose from over 80 flavor-packed options. And you can easily customize your meals to suit your lifestyle. Like I said, they have a lot of options. I personally love the protein-packed one because I have to eat a lot of protein every single day to maintain muscle mass and to put on muscle. So anyone trying to gain weight or gain muscle, you know the struggle. But they also have low-calorie stuff too, like Carb Smart and Calorie Smart options. And you can also mix and match what type of meals you want. So one day you could do protein packed, one day you could do calorie smart, one day you could do keto, it's up to you. But Green Chef delivers everything you need to make convenient, wholesome and delicious meals directly to your doorstep. Everything is brought right to you, ready to be put together. They come with instructions, easy to follow. You throw everything together and cook it, you're done. I highly recommend giving Green Chef a shot. And if you want to, you can go to greenchef.com slash aware50 and use code aware50 to get 50% off plus 20% off your next two months. That's greenchef.com slash aware50. And if you do try it, you'll know why they're the number one meal kit for healthy eating and eating well. Now, back to the podcast. Ah, okay, wait, I'm going to have to use a, a code word, but read through the lines. What would you do if your man of 10 years, now fiance, can't stop consuming corn? You know what I fucking mean. I just can't say it on YouTube. Even though you've made it very clear how it's demeaning to you as a woman. To go at a man with a corn addiction... And hitting him from the angle of it's demeaning to me as a woman, that's not enough to make someone stop. That's not enough to make someone kind of care. All he's seeing is how invalid it is. And it is an addiction. Corn addiction is a very real thing. And it's very prevalent in society right now among a lot of men. But my opinion is instead of going at it from the angle of it's disrespectful, it's demeaning, it's degrading, it's whatever. People aren't usually going to see that. Look at him and tell him what you're noticing in the way he treats you that you think is related to this habit or behavior. Point out the things you don't like about the relationship that you think are related and clear up if they are related or not. Let him see and make it very clear the consequences and the damage being done and the things you aren't cool with that are coming from that behavior and also offer your help. How can I help you stop? How can I help you want to break this? Be there for him. You're engaged. That's your partner. Act like it's your partner and you're on the same team, not opposing teams. Like if you ever are worried about how to go about a conversation with a partner, get off the other side of the fucking table when you're sitting down to have a conversation and get next to them. Metaphorically, like in your head, like imagine, okay, we're on the same team. We're fighting for the same thing. How would my approach be different? Go at it like that and look at and offer your help and how you can help him overcome this thing that is not benefiting you or him and it might be causing a little damage. Go at it from that angle instead of just the shame angle of like, it's demeaning. I fully understand your point. I fully get how you feel. I get why this is fucking with you. But you asked, what would I do in that situation? That. Go at it from that angle because that's how to actually get someone to improve or change or stop a behavior is to help them do it and not just shame them about it. So your feelings are very valid. The way to communicate it just needed a little polishing. You're good though. You got this. Okay, the next person said, where do you draw the line with blame? Went back to an old relationship. I believe in second chances. He made the same mistake. He asked me on a date and now he won't pick up when I call. Beating myself up for putting myself in the same place. Is it my fault for going back to someone who hurt me? No, it's not your fault for going back to someone who hurt you. 
because you believe in second chances. And if this person has led you to believe that they would change and they saw the error of something and they were going to change a certain behavior, if they convinced you of that and you chose to give them a chance to prove it, that's on them. That is not solely your fault. And this is not something you should beat yourself up about and get mad about. You guys have different beliefs and views and you believe in second chances. That's totally fair. It's very commendable. You have a very big heart and you care. And it's very admirable that you believe in second chances. You lived by your values. You gave this person a second chance. They showed you they'll do the same shit again, even if it hurts you. Now, if you go back, is nothing but your fault. You know the stove is hot. You touched it. Oh, it burnt you a little bit. Wait. Okay. You touched it again. It burnt you. If you get burned a third time, that's on you. Then it's your fault. But right now, you gave him a second chance. You believe in second chances. Go for it. If you thought it was a good idea, you thought it was a good idea. You had good reason to believe it was a good idea. Now you know, and you're aware, and you're solidified in the fact that you're going to walk forward without this motherfucker, and you're not going to touch the stove again. Like I said, this one's not your fault. The next one will be. Don't let there be a next one. Oh, here we go with this again. Okay, someone said, my boyfriend keeps liking other girls' posts. I told him how it makes me uncomfortable, and he would unlike them immediately, but he would go back to liking those girls' pictures shortly after. He showed you who he is, so what are you going to do? Is this a deal breaker for you or not? It is for me. If I tell you don't fucking do something and explain to you why I don't like that you do something or something hurts me or bothers me, we've talked about it, you've agreed not to do it, and then you do it again, Blatant disregard. That's disrespectful at that point. That's how I would take it. The behavior is not going to change. So instead of getting caught up in the idea of the potential, oh, life could be great if you would just stop this thing. He's not going to stop. He's got something else going on and some need being met by doing it. He's going to continue to do it, even though it hurts you and you've communicated that. He's going to go back on his word. He's now a liar. He now cannot be trusted. He now has revealed his word holds nothing. He has no integrity. He said, I'm not going to do this. Only stopped because he got caught and then did it again once he thought you weren't looking. That's a person right in front of you. They just showed you who they are. Now, what are you going to do? You got to make a decision from the new reality that's just hit you in the face. It doesn't feel good. It sucks. It's going to hurt. I have a lot of podcast episodes about breakups. whole bunch, actually. I'll help you get through it. Just watch those. But old Leo would have probably put my hands on him. Because like I said, disrespectful at that point. But new me and me now, walk off. It's very clear. You talked about it. You communicated. You gave another chance. And you got shit on. Okay? The other thing with people who are so caught up in liking people's stuff on social media. What the fuck is that? Genuinely, what is that? This man is so emotionally stunted. Has piss poor priorities. Doesn't understand what matters in his life. A real connection, a genuine love, a relationship with somebody is worth more than a double tap on a photo. Go look at whatever you want. Don't leave no trace that you looked at it. That's weird to me. But for someone to be so blind and maybe not even blind, just disregarding the fact of the damage that can come from something so goddamn stupid that you get nothing out of, acting like you get paid to like girls' posts, cut it out. But to know that he hurts you with it, and he's still just so caught up on such a superficial thing. He lacks priority. He lacks perspective. You do not value the same things. This is someone who has a lot of life left to grow and learn. And you're not on the same page. So go find someone with perspective and take the pain. It's going to hurt. Be stronger than a lot of people are with situations like this. If you're wondering, should you leave someone? Should you not? From... Me, please be stronger than I've been in the past with shit I've put up with years ago. You will never regret it. And just for me, be stronger than I was. This is stupid little bullshit, but it's just going to fester and feed into more things. Trust me, cut it off. Oh, T. Okay, someone said, I've been in a relationship with my boyfriend for three years. 
three years, keep that in mind. He has had a family friend our age that he's grown up with and I found out they're closer than I thought. They message often and he confides in her a lot. He tells me she's like a sister to him, but I can't seem to be 100% comfortable with their friendship. Please help. Am I stressing about nothing? No, babe, you're not stressing about nothing. This is definitely something because for you to just now, three years into dating this dude, find out he's actually way closer with someone is a fucking problem. That's a problem that's an issue. There's something being hidden on purpose. You're just now finding out how close they are and how much they talk and how much he confides in her. Very much fishy. Fish stinks over here. Fishy as hell. Fish market. Definitely be weary. Definitely be stressed out about it. Don't get engaged. Don't get a pet together. Don't have a kid with them. There's some definite conversations to be had about this. Not in a bad or malicious way, but they might be bullshitting you. Just to be honest, they might be. Because why three years in you're finding out you're actually way closer than this person than I thought? What? Three years into dating somebody? You should know a lot about who they're closest to. So why is that being hidden? That's just very off. Like I said, fish market. What the fuck? You need to go get his iCloud on the Apple Watch or an iPad or some shit and start reading the messages or go through his phone. See what they're really talking about. Or next time they hang out, go f show up. Find his location, track him, show up. Don't show up and say that you're there and let your presence be known. Just watch. Just observe. Watch them going in the parking lot. Do they kiss? Do they smooch? Do they be doing any weird shit? You know? Well, that might be a little toxic, but three years you're already invested. Yeah, do a little crazy shit to get your confirmation. Do it. Like, so what? You showed up. Okay. So be it. You've been hiding a bitch for three years. I don't want to hear it. You want to call me insecure? No, I'm just crazy. <laughs> All right. The last person said, how do you stay happy? Like, I always feel like I'm tired and I become happy all of a sudden. And then I get depressed. I can't make it continuous. I'm just tired of healing. I'm going to read through a couple things you said. Being happy is not something that's consistent all the time. You're a human being. You got a whole scale of emotions you're going to filter through and stick through and all of that. To expect yourself to be happy all the time and to be in an upstate all the time is unrealistic. And a lot of people promote it like it's true. It's fucking not. Everybody goes through ups and downs. Everybody's got headache. Everybody's got things going good and bad in life. It's normal to feel bad sometimes. I know that's so controversial to say. Oh my God. Yeah, it's true. You're allowed to feel like shit sometimes. You're allowed to be tired. You're allowed to be sad. You're allowed to not want to get out of the bed some days. Like that's... Fine. I mean, if you lay there, that's on you. But like, do what you gotta do. But it's normal to feel the waves. It's normal to feel ups and downs. It's normal to feel all of that. It's not about being happy all the time. That's an unrealistic goal no human can achieve. So don't stress out too much about that with trying to fixate on like being happy all the time and making that your goal. Don't. From someone who's tried it, you're gonna get fed up really quick. It sounds like you're fed up. So... Like I'm saying, just wipe it out of your head. That's not an accurate goal. Maybe do like some research and look into the human emotions and the scales and what the needs are for fulfillment as a human being. Look into biology, look into psychology, anything you can to research how what you're feeling is normal and to have a normal like emotional state all day long is not normal. It's just what people promote, okay? So don't think you're crazy. Don't think you're nuts. You shouldn't just try to only be happy all the time. But the other part you said, I'm just tired of healing. I have a fear and a little bit of a worry that you think feeling bad and then the next day feeling good or doing something to feel good the next day is healing. And then the next day when you feel bad and then you do something to fix it and feel good again, you think that's healing. So you think the daily ups and downs of emotions and all the intentional effort you're putting into changing how you feel is healing. Changing just the way you feel day to day on a basic emotional level is not healing. So I think you're actually just tired of the ups and downs and the effort and the constant like, fuck, I have to do something to feel better. That's exhausting. That's annoying. But 
healing is a lot different. I'm going to do a full podcast episode about healing and how the healing era promoted on social media is horseshit. Okay, that's coming. Your healing era is over, babe. I'm going to mop the floor with that topic. But for now, with thinking this is healing, that's not healing. That's just feeling a little bit better. But my advice for this is not letting the fluctuations in mood change your mindset, your beliefs, and what you tell yourself and don't let it change your actions either. Like if you're on track with something, it's going to feel exhausting if every time you're emotional, you're dicked around. Oh, now I can't do this. Now I can't do that. Now all my goals are on hold because I feel this way and I feel like I can't do something. You can. You can feel like shit and do the opposite. You can be thirsty and not drink. You can be horny and not fuck. You can be hungry and not eat. You can be tired and not sleep. There's plenty of feelings you can have and urges and sensations and not let it dictate what you do or think. So... Learning how to comfort yourself is a big thing. Learning how to get control of your mind will also help. So like when you are experiencing a downtime, I always get a little excited and I have a stable knowing that with every downtime, it flips, always flips. It's always going to make sense later and it's always going to hit you later. It's happened enough times where I've solidified that belief to stay stable in me even when things get bad. So look at the proof that you have that every single time it gets bad, it gets good again. Or every time it gets bad, you learn something that turns it good or you find a new perspective or a new mindset or a new opportunity or some shit. You start thinking those new things, looking at things different, and it causes the uplift so that you can get a little bit more confident in the downs when the waves are coming. Like when the down wave comes, you're going to feel a little bit more safe in it and you're not going to feel as like, big of a sense of catastrophizing and freaking out because life's awful. Oh my God, I don't want to get out of bed. Now I can't get out of bed. You cannot want to get out of the bed and still get out of the bed. Don't convince yourself your emotions run you. You're stronger than that. You're here for more than that. So cling to that. You got this, babe. I always forget how much fun I have with these episodes. I'm going to start doing them again. So if you want to be featured in one of the next episodes, I'll leave the link where you could submit your situation. It's always anonymous. I don't know anyone's name. And I leave it like that on purpose so you feel free to just send the tea in. A lot of people use it to vent and get things out. So you can use it however you need it. But I will leave the link in the description where you could submit your situation. I'll also leave the link to my tickets for my tour. I'm currently on tour. I'm actually leaving tomorrow to go to Texas. I'm recording this early. Baby, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. It's damn midnight. <laughs> but the show goes on, you know? Discipline. But on my live shows, I talk about the topic of confidence from a lot of different angles. I have a roadmap with eight checkpoints and I walk you through my whole process of confidence, my whole mindset around it and everything that I've used to get to the point that I'm at. All the ups and downs and shit in between. But I also throw a little spirituality into it and it gets real good. But that is a really big component with confidence in general is not feeling opposed in life by a higher force. So my checkpoint in the roadmap with that, that's just one of the eight, is how to stop feeling opposed in life by something bigger and greater than you. And then I teach you how to flip it and do all that. But like I said, the link for tickets is in the description if you wanna get one and come to a show. You won't fucking regret it. I could bet my life on it. I'm also gonna put my social media, everything else you need from me, just look in the description if you wanna keep up with me or find something, it's all fucking in there. But if you're listening to the audio version of this on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, leave me a five stars rating. And if you're watching this on YouTube, leave me a thumbs up and a comment or something. Put a black heart so I know that you made it this far in the video if you listened. And that is all I've got for this week's podcast. So everybody, be safe, take care of yourself, and I'll talk to you guys next Sunday.